Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Mario is with us, Craig and Stevie as well. Uh, the FA Cup draw was, of course, made today. Who will go past the fourth? I helped you out today, right? I helped you out today when you had a, one of those moments. <laughs> what moments? Couldn't remember Eastley. Yeah, that's right? true. Couldn't yeah. remember Eastley. <laughs> yes. And we could have left you hanging, hanging high and dry, going right. embarrassing <clears throat> live on there. I can't remember. The we yes. answered you, right? Yes. I made one mistake. You made it a couple of times. It, it usually depends on the size of the mistake. Yes, yours is quite glaring. <laughs> you kept calling oh, it Times G. It was such a serious but moment an, as well. And he, and he, was, that, he was generally that, quite angry at yeah, that. Yeah, that adds into it as well. You were, you were doing so well. Shut up. And it was so serious. There was an X in front of it. And yes. it, an X means times. No. It's got a double meaning. What? An X is a double meaning. So why why would X represent expected? You put as many X's in front times G. It. It's, still same thing. it's not the same. It's a short thing at that. It's not the it same is. thing whatsoever, it Craig Burley. No. This is back to 360 all no, over again. It's not. Times it G. Is. Times. You're the only one who calls it times G. Yeah, well exactly. Don't be a sheep. But <laughs> don't be a sheep. Don't worry about yeah. facts. Call sheep. it what you want. Uh, Mario, who will go past the fourth round? Tottenham or City? Whew. Oh, no, I think City, because De Bruyne is back. I'm expecting a lot from him. Uh, Mario, what were the oddest dressing room or dietary habits of your Chelsea teammates that shocked you coming from Ajax's academy? Oh, music, because at Ajax, when I was at Ajax, it was always quiet and everybody was so focused. You know, it was like very, how would I say? Um, I think the experienced players, they, they will have chats, but the young boys, including myself, we were kind of quiet because we wanted to be, yeah, you wanted to be right for the coach and the most experienced players. When you come to Chelsea, <laughs> they had a speaker in the dressing room, blowing up the music so loud and people were just bouncing. And I was like, in the beginning, I was like, how are we going to play this game? Is everybody going to be focused? Then the referee blows the whistle. Oh my God, everybody was ready. And I was like, oh, okay, this, I didn't expect this coming, but yeah, that was the thing. One club, no music, the other one, loud music, like a, like a nightclub. Were you surprised at all by some of the beer consumption that maybe you saw or some of the, the food that was chosen as well? No, because I think, I think at my time, I think they were already going at the angle of like... Craig had uh, left, yeah. The, yeah, I think it was already gone. But I heard the stories, of course, you know, like some of, of the course. guys were telling like, warming up. Before they warm up, some will have a shot first and then go and warm up. You know, the same <laughs> stuff like that. But no, at the time when I was at Chelsea, we didn't have moments like that. We would play like, um, there was one game. Um, I don't want, I won't, I won't call you the name what it's called because it's kind of rude. But it's like, uh, I'm sure the guys are familiar with it. When you try to keep the ball up and you get like one, uh, one touch, and if you mess up, they can flick your ear. And we did oh. that in the dressing room so Oh my God. And I remember we had a captain, Dennis Wise. He was always in charge calling everybody. Hey, come on guys, come on, let's play it, let's play it. And we we're like, we gotta play in a minute. He said, I don't care, come on, let's play it. So we played that game a lot of times in the dressing room. Uh, Stevie, you're the epitome of dietary habits. Yeah. And maybe wouldn't I was thinking it. more of all this dressing room. Yeah. So I left Liverpool. And when you're at a place like that, I'm assuming everybody, whatever they are, when they go to a good place, they think everywhere else is the same. I see, yeah. So I left Liverpool and went to Notch County, and I walked through the door, the, f the first day I went, and they all went, oh, what are you doing here? I was like, ah, what do you mean? They're like, everybody wants to get away from here. Oh, lovely. What did you, you come here for? I was like, oh, holy smoke, what have I done here? Yeah. <laughs> Every single one I wanted away. Hated it. Oh. Couldn't get away from the place quick enough. I was like, that's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, it's, maybe it was just, yeah. Like, <laughs> what are you doing here? That's a nice welcome. Yeah, what are you doing Craig here? Craig gets that everywhere. <laughs> Angie, I've sort of an improvement in his dietary habits today when he came in with his lunch. My goodness. What was his lunch today? Two bags of chips. Yeah, well, put it one way. You, yeah. you know, the, you know. Have you ever watched Doctor Who? You see the TARDIS. Doctor Who. Right. Yes. The TARDIS. You walk yeah. in this TARDIS, and then you can fit a thousand people in it. it was, that was like his bag. It yeah. was like it was Mary Poppins esque. If you see, just, just kept food just, just stuff kept just coming kept out. The bag was only yeah. about that size. Yeah. There was chips coming out, <laughs> it, and, he, and then he, there was soup coming out. Yeah. It, there was then there was bread. Yeah. Chocolate and then there was bars. more chips. Then he went, oh, chocolate. Yes. It's like, Oh. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, Stevie, you're doing a good job. You, yeah. Yeah. Well, you could say she's not really. Well, she's looking like, after you nicely. Hey. To be fair, I'm worth more dead than alive, so you never know. Uh, there we are. Stevie, in mid-round cup <laughs> matches like this week, if you lost, would you rather it be against a big rival club 
that you unluckily got drawn against, or a small lower league club that pulled off a massive upset? Well, it depends who you play for. If you're playing for Liverpool, yes. it makes no difference who you get beat by. Yeah. Right. You got it. You're absolutely got it. But there's no preference. Like, would you prefer to lose to Manchester United or Sutton? No, United? It's just it's a little bit more embarrassing if you lose to a lower league team. Yeah. Right. But at the end of the day, you're out. Right. You're out. <laughs> I don't think I, 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 I can't watch an FA Cup final because I'm not in it. I can't yeah. watch it. I don't. I don't even. I'm not. I don't have an interest in a tournament. Well, you do when now. I was playing. Well, right, I didn't. Yes, I didn't. Yes, I didn't. Well, but, but when I was well, playing, we're having another one of our moments there. <laughs> when I was we're playing, have to brush as as, this one over. As soon as we were out, that was it. I couldn't watch it. Really? Yeah. You wouldn't watch it? I wouldn't watch it. Though. If Liverpool, obviously, didn't have, if they were not in a title race either, would you watch any of the games? Yeah. No, oh, yeah, I'll watch that. Why is that different? Just it, well, again, the the profile of the FA Cup has changed a little today. Right. But certainly when he was playing and me before him, I mean, it was everything. Right. Everything. Yeah, that's interesting. But, you wouldn't you wouldn't watch a final back in the when day I, when you. When I came to Liverpool, they were European champions, and the first FA Cup tie I was ever involved with was Chelsea away, and Chelsea were in the the second division at the time. Right. It was the third round, Chelsea away, go there, and you've got Dalglish, Soonis, Phil Neal, uh, McDermott, I mean, Phil Thompson, like all the big names in English football that hadn't won the FA Cup yet. Right. And we got beat 1-0. I was 13th man, so I was getting the kit <laughs> in and out of the bus and doing all that stuff. They came in after the game, and I've never, I was like that. Absolute silence. Absolute, you could have heard the pin drop. Right. Every single one of them. The biggest names in, in English football were not in tears, but you could you could see the pain and the way they were sitting in their face and we're out of the FA Cup and I was like ah, oof, <laughs> all of a sudden you realise this is this is big time. What happens on the bus yeah. journey back from those sort of Tiles. for the whole trip? Not the whole yeah. trip, no. No, not the whole trip. Because because back then we had beer on the bus. I see. Eventually, Listened up. it would loosen up. I see. But yeah, you weren't you weren't seeing. But you know, we no. talk about the, the, the FA. Stevie said the FA Cup has changed a little bit for clubs, and it has because <clears> the money that has come into the game and the importance of Champions League football, whether we agree or not, and Premier League and the money, blah blah. blah. But I've yet to meet a player, and if you ha if you do, they really shouldn't bother playing. Who doesn't want to play at Wembley? Yeah. And and it used to be the. Uh, the uh, cut and closer for the season, didn't it? Yep. Yeah, that used to be it. Yeah. It used to be it, and sometimes that changes now depending what it was going on. <clears throat> that used to be the last game, and sometimes it was a fortnight after the league had finished, and you just... Yeah. If you don't want to play, <clears throat> and a lot of guys won't get the opportunity, and I understand that, but if you're playing for one of the bigger teams or you have a chance to play in an FA Cup final and it doesn't float your boat, you might as well not play. Right. Because yeah, it is, yeah. when you get to it and you're at Wembley and you see what it means to the supporters. And I remember in 94, Chelsea hadn't been to the cup final, I think, I think it was 25 years. It had been quite a drought in getting there. And just just the, the, the supporters and what it meant to them looking forward to this, even though we were middle of the table in the Premier League at the time, going, going absolutely nowhere, really, with Glenn, uh, just the fact that we're playing at Wembley at the end of May was... And it, it's, yeah. it ha, I don't care what, what it's like now, it still has to be like that for players. Yeah. It's got to be. Mario? Yeah. But, but that, that was like uh, what Greg said. I, I, for me, it was a big surprise, though. You know, when I when I was there, and then you got to wait for that, like, after the season was done, we carried on for training, like, what, maybe one or two weeks? It was new for me, because, you know, you, you, you're a young boy, you're tense for the final, but then also you're looking at and you say like, no one else is training, only the two teams who are playing. So then you're like, you know, like you're having a go and everybody's just fighting for his position. But away from that, yeah, Wembley, I think for myself, playing in Holland, it was a dream for me to play in Wembley. It was like, regardless of anyone that gets that opportunity, you should definitely want to play in that stadium because what it brought i mean i i, I saw the older one and the new one but it, it's just special it's just something that if you're a footballer you want to make sure that you play there because i watched england play for example before i came to england and they were playing in wembley and i was like i hope one day i can play there so when you get that moment enjoy it because it's really a great stadium to play at 
Uh, just take us through, you, you mentioned Stevie is the 13th man. You, your role was to, to do what? You were saying you had to unload the bus? Like, uh, go for anything. Really? Anything that needed done, you did it. Take so the kit off, take the kit off the bus. So there was one sub then? Yes. And the 13th man was not stripped? So the, the reason they took 13 is because in case somebody got ill the night before. Okay. Somebody woke up in the morning and was ill. Can you imagine that? I, I, I would be the sub. Right. But wow. that never happened when I, okay. I, I, that never once happened when I was there. So after that, your job is to do anything you're asked to do. Right, like take, what, for example? Take, take the kit. Once, as soon as you get to the stadium, get around the back and help with the kit. Right. Take mm. the kits in there, get the balls, make sure you get, if there's balls needing signed, take the balls around the lads, get them to sign it. Wow. I mean, anything. You're literally the goal. Yeah, yeah you're, you're the goal for it, aye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, on a couple of days ago, we spoke about the worst investments uh, that the boys had made. Kieran talked about buying plastic forks for a thousand pounds. Frank um, invested. I can't remember what it was, but he lost fifty thousand pounds. Stevie talked about an investment, but refused to talk about it because he was so depressed about how much money he lost. And this leads us to who will step up and buy Stevie enough drinks for him to spill his worst investment yes. story? Yeah. Yeah. Who's doing it? <laughs> that could be a good investment for someone to get your story. <laughs> I think it's going to you off. Uh, you've had some time to think. Would you like to share it now? No, I wouldn't have No? You have no half. No? No. no. <laughs> Private. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you cheer me up or what? No, I'm just... Uh, no, the question's in front All of right, me, All right, well, the answer's no. Move. All right, OK. The ground, that's a drop in the ocean. <laughs> for Frank. <laughs> Frank. <laughs> uh, how was your investments, Craig? All positive? All successful? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you like Mario backup keepers playing in cup ties? Backup keepers playing in cup ties. Um, you know, you know, it's a difficult one because if 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 my okay, if this is the only trophy that I can win, I want to play with the best. Right. And and if that is my backup goalkeeper, I'm sorry for him, but. <laughs> If I, if I know that, let's say now, what Chelsea's in, the situation they're in now, okay, they're not going to win the league, uh, they have a cup they can win, right? Because they're playing in both cups. I want my best goalkeeper behind me because I want to win that cup. I don't care, you know, about the backup and what the situation is. Just figure it out and win that battle between the two goalkeepers or the three goalkeepers. Figure that battle out and win it because we, the guys on the field, has to fight that battle too. So it is no difference. Now, for me, I would say no. I mean, the backup goalkeeper could only do it when the team is really that high up in the league. Let's say you are a Liverpool, then you can have a backup goalkeeper and say you can play the cup games. But away from that, if you're lower down the ranks in 12 or 10 position, I don't think it, sh it should be played like that. For all, do you think Craig annoys Dan more or does Dan annoy Stevie more? No, I think I, think <laughs> I annoy you more. Craig doesn't annoy me unless it's Christmas and he has some sort of breakdown. Yeah. I think I have a breakdown. I have a... <laughs> <laughs> some sort of... Aye. Some sort of moment. Some sort of Christmas epiphany. See, the problem with you is, is that sometimes the stuff you come out with, I don't always <laughs> get whether you're taking the mic or right. you're serious, because sometimes you seriously are so wrong... Right. ..that I think you're having a laugh. I see. That's the problem we've got. <laughs> I see. So, yeah. We're about to go on air. <laughs> Big show today, obviously, Manchester United. We're going to talk about friends back and back and back. Steve goes... Oh, you should see my toenails at the moment. They're really cutting. They're like talons. All right, thanks for that information, Stevie. That's beautiful. Uh, Spurs versus United this weekend. Percentage chance United win that game, Mario. Spurs versus United this weekend. You know, like, because the Spurs have so many uh, guys out, you know, that that's why... Um, they are looking now to buy players because they're talking about defensive players and stuff like that. So that's, it, it, it could be a, it could be a, an equal match in the sense of United not being stable at all, and Spurs is looking to see like, hey, can they get that momentum going again? So I think it could be. Uh, I still give it to Spurs. Yeah, that's not answering the question, Mario. What percentage chance of Manchester United to win? Seventy percent Spurs. 70% Spurs. No, no, no. no, no it's a little too high. Let me go 60%. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not Spurs United, is it? Hmm? It's United Spurs. Okay. It's not at Tottenham. All right. Oh, it's not at Tottenham? Okay. No, oh. they've they already played at Tottenham. Man United, that was one of the games Man United actually played well for half an hour. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, uh, the handball. The handball. 
That being said, I think it was 60-40 for Spurs at Spurs. Right. I'm just edging a minute 50, yeah. just over 50% for Spurs. 50% for Spurs? Yeah. I think they're a bit of All right, and then what about a draw? Don't get smart. <laughs> well, it's a possibility, isn't it? There's a possibility I'll come over there, along with his nibs, give you a heavy slap. Hey, what about the times G? Who's going to get more times G in that game? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Stevie? Come on, Stevie. I'm going to go with United. It's just... OK. What percentage? 55, 45. 50, but then what about the yeah. draw? Interesting. We, we never had the draw. 50 50. Nobody gave her. What? The draw is 50 50. What are you talking about? You said what was the draw? Yeah, well, the draw's a possibility, isn't it? Aye. But you said 55 45, so there's no room yeah. for the draw. Well, there could be. What? Well, there could be. No, there's three options. Yeah. If you get 55 yeah. to United. Well, there's going to be a winner. I'm saying it's United. Right. But I think the draw is 50 50. It's more likely to be a draw. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wrong with that. Oh, OK, I understand what you're saying. 50 yeah, I don't think Spurs won. Right. If anybody wins, yeah. it's United. OK. Which is why I gave them slightly more. Right. But actually, I think it's going to be a draw. OK, all right, perfect. 50. I don't know your logic. Where's your logic? Well, because, because it's three options, isn't oh, it? But... United win, Spurs win, draw. I only need two options, Dan, thanks. OK, all right, yeah. the options are 0% Spurs. Very economical. 0% Spurs, 50%. Yeah. I'm confused. There you go. What are you confused about? You confused it. I thought we'd made it pretty clear. <laughs> uh, that is it. Mario, that's enough of all this nonsense. Go to bed. Uh, ESPN FC is back oh, tomorrow. Another working day for Craig Burley, Shaka Hislop. I oh, know. Oh, you're getting extra. Oh, well, I was being suggested. <laughs> um, Shaka's back from his holiday. And as well. Wednesday. Uh, and back in Oh, Craig, how are you coping? It's a six day week. Uh, Shaka's back. Me and Stevie are off to trim his toenails. Nice.